do a work there. So we're glad he's here. He's going to give his testimony in the morning service, and you'll get to, of course, get to know him and, and more as the days go by. Uh, now, we're in Ecclesiastes, and what I'm doing this morning is I want to just do a review of what we've done thus far. We're down into Ecclesiastes chapter number 8. We're, we're in the section that deals with uh, uh, con some conclusions and, and uh, our, our, the matter of uh, observing. And we said that the outline of the book is chapter 1 and chapter 2 is reasoning. He reasons things out. And then chapter 3 through 10 is a section we call it observing. Observing, that's watching, looking. And then chapters 11 and 12, making some uh, conclusions. So there are actually, I believe, we can summar summarize the vanities up under 10 headings. And I'm sure it could be done different ways, but we're going to begin with chapter 2 and verse 15 and 16. And we're going to see that there is a vanity, there is a vanity in human wisdom. Now, these things we've already, we've already covered before, but I, we're doing it again. There's value in some repetition and, and going back over. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter number 2 and verse number 15. Then said I in my heart, as it happeneth to the fool, so it happeneth even to me. And why was I then more wise? Then I said in my heart that this also is vanity. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever. Seeing that which now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten. And how dieth the wise man as the fool? You can demonstrate and display all the human wisdom you want to, but this world in this world you will live and you will die and the majority of people on the face of this earth the great majority of people on the face of this earth will not know you by name um, the majority of people on this earth will never hear your name mentioned the majority of people who've lived will never hear you mentioned you can be a great wise person according to human wisdom but there is a vanity. He said in verse 15, As it happeneth to the fool, so it happeneth to me. You can be as wise as you desire to be and as you can be. And in this world, the majority of people who live upon this earth will never know your name and will not care what your name is and will not care what you know or what you don't know. And uh, they just simply, that is the way the world is. So we're looking at vanity. You say, I'm going to be a great, uh, have great wisdom. Well, if that's what your desire is, then your desire is vanity. The Word of God's already got it, got your number there. Look at chapter 2 and look at verse number 19. Cha chapter 2 and verse number 19. There is a vanity in human labor. Human labor, there's a vanity in it. Chapter 2, verse number 19. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? Yet shall he have rule over all my labor, wherein I've labored, and wherein I've showed myself wise under the sun. This is also vanity. Therefore, I went about to cause my heart to despair of all the labor which I took under the sun. For there is a man whose labor is in wisdom and in knowledge and in equity. Yet to a man that hath not labored therein shall he leave it for his portion. This also is vanity and a great evil. So what happens is this. Uh, I labor, I work, I spend uh, time, I, uh, I take great pains to make sure that uh, that which I have labored for will be left to responsible people. I, I work and I save and I even take legal matters and I make a will, I, I draw up legal contracts and I want to leave it to a wise person. Yet, even if I'm able to leave it to one wise person, the next one comes along, will probably be a fool and waste everything that you have. Very, very, very uh, few things in this world a man can have control over beyond his grandchildren. And uh, even then, it's very difficult. Uh, most of the people work and labor and leave all of their wisdom and their labor for a fool right immediately after them. 
And sad to say, sometimes it's our own children. It shouldn't be that way. But sad to say, it is. There are many people who work and labor and do without and sacrificially live, and yet uh, then their own child comes after them and very frivolous and, and knows nothing of what it costs to have to uh, gain and pay and work, and they know nothing of that. And so it's easy come, easy go. And the money goes. There's a vanity of human labor. Uh, when you look at this world, uh, you can summarize everything under the name of vanity. I'm going to do a chalk picture one of these days. I've uh, got it. I, I, just a matter of uh, putting it on a board and working out a little detail. But, but it has a lady, or a woman I should say, sitting in front of a, a uh, uh, cabinet with a mirror. And this cabinet with a mirror, with all of her perfumes and all of her makeup and all of her jewelry is on this. And the way the shadows are, the mirror, the large mirror, actually forms a skull. And the shadows on it and so forth. And, of course, that's a vanity. That's, what, that's why they call it a vanity. And uh, I just thought, what a, what a tremendous illustration of the way this world is with all of the paint and all of the uh, show and all of the pretense, the real character is not there. And under the sun, there is vanity in labor, vanity in hu human wisdom. You can get all of the uh, knowledge you want to get and you still uh, will be a vanity thing. Get all the, do all the labor and you try to try to maintain it right. And we have to understand this world is vanity. Then uh, look again, look please at chapter 2 and look at verse number 26. Chapter 2 and verse number 26. And all of these I'm, I'm prefacing with human, see. Human wisdom, human labor, human purpose. There's a vanity in your purposing. You propose to do things. Um, verse number 26. For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he giveth travail to gather and to heap up, that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Now, you may have a little difficulty picking up here. You have to understand, in verse 26, again, we're dealing with things under the sun. Dealing with things under the sun. All right, here's the sun. We're not looking above the sun. We're looking here at a man standing down here. Here's this man down here. What does he have? This is what he has under the sun. He's standing down here under the sun. God's up here. He is not looking at God. He's looking at everything under the sun. Wisdom under the sun. Everything under the sun. Labor under the sun. His purpose under the sun. Now, this man real, must realize down here that he can, he can um, gather together and get, get things up. And he gets them because it's, all, it's like God purposes... To give to this man, not a righteous man, but God allows even what we would call a sinner, a wicked man. We'd call him, we'd call him wicked man. He gets all of this money. He gets, he gets all of these goods uh, given to him. Why, there, there are people running around on the face of this earth with all kind of money. They don't know what to do with it. They got so much money, they don't know what to do with it. Where'd they get it? Who allowed them to have it? I'll tell you who, who gave it to them. God did. That doesn't mean, though, that that man is a saved man. Under the sun, to a man, whomever God pleases, he'll give power, he'll give position, he'll give a place to. And then after he gives him all this money and all this power and all this position, the same God will take him and throw him in hell. What should a prophet man he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? How does a man get things in this world? How do, well, he doesn't get them unless God allows him to have them. And I don't have any problem saying God gives it to him. I, I, I 
will give a rat a piece of cheese to break his neck in a rat trap. God giveth to a man that's good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy. Oh, yes, he, he, they, they, oh, so happy, you know, so happy. You can see them. <laughs> their, their joy, you know, their joy. There's a joy of this world. But there are a lot of people, hey, there are a lot of people on their way to hell. They think they're having a good time. Well, they get down a little bit, you know, they get back up and go on, go on their way, but they think they're having a good time. Um... But to the sinner, he giveth travail to gather and to heap up, and that he may give to him that's good before God. It's like uh, these sinners and these good, we're not talking about people going, we're not talking about people who are, are saved or lost. It's God shows favor on certain individuals, and God removes favor from certain individuals, and you can't stay his hand and say, you can't do that, or you shouldn't do that, are you going to do it like I think it ought to be done? Let's face it, folks. There are plenty, plenty of people that got all kinds of dough that think nothing about God. Who gives it to them? God does. And there are people who love God and serve God. And they have some, there are some people who have money. And they love the Lord and serve the Lord and, and use it. Uh, and there's some people who love the Lord and serve the Lord, and, and man, everything they got, somebody rips them off all their life. They rip them off all their life. God lets it go on. There is a vanity down here on this earth that we could only see. Now, we have a short time to walk down here. And the short time that we walk down here, uh, it, it means nothing in light of eternity. It means nothing. In light of eternity. Your children now that you think you have so much time with. You really have no time at all. They're going to be gone. Before you know it. The little ones that you worry about now. Have to carry out of church. Or try to keep them quiet in church. You know and all of that. And change some of them. Change their diapers. And, and they're all crawling around. These little ones that's running around on these steps. And. On Sunday night and, and playing and playing in the church and all. You watch them. You wait. You wait. One day you're going to turn around. You're going to look and you're going to say. My children are gone. I used to have babies around my feet. And they're gone. No more babies. And you're going to look back over the years and you're going to wonder. How and where did that time go? Purpose. You purpose to do many things. Our purposes don't work out. Our purposes are no good. Um, another one. Look at the uh, look at chapter 4 and look at verse number 4. Here's the vanity of human rivalry. That is, you can't do right and get away with it. <laughs> Under the sun, crime does pay. Under the sun. If you're sneaky enough, crime does pay. A good work does not go unpunished <laughs> under the sun. Do you realize that you can do 999 good deeds for your so-called friends, and then when you do not do the 1,000th one, they count you as an enemy? You realize that's the way this world is? Verse number 4, again, I could center it all travail and every right work, that for this a man is envied of his neighbor. You know what? You try to live clean. You know what somebody wants to do? They want to get you dirty as soon as they can. You get a young girl. A young girl. She's clean. She's pure. You know what some old uh, reprobate wants to do as soon as they can? They want to get her soil. So they'll be like them. 
You know what they want to do? You go to a job, you go to work, you don't curse. You don't listen to the dirty jokes and filthy jokes. You know what some old reprobate wants to do as soon as he can? He wants to get you to stand and get that Christian to laugh with him and, and listen to the joke and tell the jokes with him. He'd love to see that. Why? Because he wants to justify his sin. He says, if he can do it, and that means all of us are just the same. He is bound for hell. He has a mind of hell, and he doesn't know what he's got. He's blind and trespassing in sins. Every right work that for this a man is envied of his neighbor. You know what I used to have when I went into work in a plant? I'd go in the second shift. They knew I was a preacher. I carried my Bible. I'd lay my Bible on the I laid my Bible on the machine where I worked. You know why I'd laid that Bible on that machine where I worked? Because I needed it. I wasn't trying to impress anybody. I needed it. I needed to st try to keep some kind of sanity and keep some kind of cleanness in my life. Uh, man, I, you know, I, I needed it myself. I wanted to go home at night to my wife and kids, and I wanted to go home at night clean and right, body and mind and spiritually right with God. Because I had a goal out there somewhere that I wanted to pastor a church. I wanted to preach the word of God someplace. I wanted to be a faithful minister someplace. And I knew I needed to be right. So I got my Bible and I put it there. I just, I found out I couldn't trust myself. I put my Bible there. I had to have my Bible right there with me. And, and, and I had to have something there visibly, man, to just keep me reminded. I'd come into work and walk into the place where I worked, and right there in front of the place where I worked, the first shift, I put a picture of a naked woman up there right on the board. You know why they did that? You know why? For every right work, a man's envied of his neighbor. You know why they did that? Because that Bible was a rebuke to them. Somebody trying to live right was a rebuke to them. Somebody trying to live right around them, it took a cloak off their sin. It said, look, another human being can try to live right, and you've got no, you've got no uh, excuse for your actions. They said, we need excuses. Let's get Dave Reese down there into hog pen with the rest of us and let him grow around the slop. I already been down the slop. And uh, no thank you, brother. Once you got out of the slop and you had some of God's, you had some of God's uh, food on his table, you don't want the hog slop. Every right work of this a man is envied of his neighbor. That's, that's under the sun. Is what you have to battle with day after day after day after day. This is, this, this is down where this is really living. You can take the, all the days of our lives and as the world turns and throw that crap out the window because it means nothing. Bunch of sentimental slop that has nothing to do with reality anywhere. All it does creates a bunch of old neurotic women and men who look at it. Amen, preacher. Amen. If that's your diet, God help you. Rivalry. Human rivalry. All right, look at avarice. That's the next one. Look at chapter 4, verse 7. I return saw vanity unto the son. There is one alone, there is not a second. Yea, he hath neither child nor brother. Yet there's no end of all his labor, neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Somebody told me not long ago, they said, we've got a job. Watching a kid. Watching a kid. My hours the same hours as his mother. His mother works uh, all day long. I stay all day long. Seven o'clock in the morning, six at night. Can you imagine some woman with a baby? At home and need somebody to watch them. Can you imagine some woman out working from 7 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock at night and paying somebody to watch for the kid? Watch for a kid? Not just paying them anything. I mean, man, you're talking about $250 a week. For five days' work. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? See, that's where we live now. What is that woman's work? 
What was that baby, an accident? What was that baby? What was the baby, an accident and a work of purpose? That's what they're saying. How in the name of God can any mama bring up her baby, putting him under somebody else's guidance 12 hours a day? You tell me how they can do it. You say, we have to have it. No, you don't have to have it. What you'll have to have is one day you'll have to give answer to God for those children you didn't bring up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's what you'll have to have. That's what all of us will have to have. Avers. Insatiable desire for riches. Give it, it, it. I'll sacrifice anything. I'll put my children on the altar of greed and covetousness just so I can get me some things, things. Look at verse 16. Verse 16, human fame. Verse 16, chapter 4, verse 16. There's no end of all the people, even of all that have been before them. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. All of you remember uh, the dope head Elvis Presley. All of y'all remember him. Some people think you blaspheme when you say that. They don't know their they don't know their idol. But everybody here knows Elvis Presley. You wait fifty years. You wait fifty years, and you ask some young person, "Who is he?" You know what? He'll be as unknown as uh, Glenn Miller among the modern generation. Who is Glenn Miller to the modern generation who goes out and listens to the Rolling Stones? Who's Glenn Miller? Some guy way back yonder that played real Christian music, they think. <laughs> Some guy way back yonder. Well, we were driving up to uh, uh, Greenville the other day, and, and I saw the bus come by, Glenn Miller Orchestra. I told my wife, I said, there goes a... She said, my goodness, said they, if that's anybody that played with him back in the 40s, they must be 80 years old now. <laughs> uh they had to have a, a, a wagon load full of Geritol on the back there. <laughs> if they were all, I don't think they were original members. But who knows who Glenn Miller was? Hey, who will know who all these are? You can get all the singers. There are singers right now that, uh, that you could name from the 20s that were very popular and people heard them. Back in 1920, nobody knows who they are. Nobody cares who they are. Their music's gone. Their style is gone. But yet people, oh, they used to fall over them, slobber over them back in the 20s. They also that come after shall not rejoice in them. Fame goes, human fame goes. Desire. Desire. Look at the next one. Uh, chapter 5, verse 10. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. Nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. There's a vanity of human desire. You are not satisfied. Abundance never satisfies. You never get enough. If what you want is abundance, you never get enough. The vanity of desire, the vanity of desire, it never satisfies. Never satisfies. A quarter in the pocket never satisfied anybody. Doesn't satisfy. Look at chapter 6 and verse number 9. The vanity of covetousness. Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the desire. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. The matter of coveting. Then you've got the matter of laughter and frivolity. Look at chapter 7, verse 6. Chapter 7, verse 6. As for the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of a fool. You see jokes and laughing and comedy and comedians, it's loud, but it's not very long. It doesn't last very long. When you put thorns under a pot and set them on fire, it, they crack. They make a lot of noise, but they're gone soon. As the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of the fool. This also is vanity. Your answer is not in clowns and jokes and laughing. Then uh, the last thing is the, is the vanity of human purpose or just, I mean justice, human justice. Look at chapter 8. Look at verse number 14. Chapter 8, verse 14. All of these things. Chapter 8, verse 14. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth, that there be just men, unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Again, there be wicked men, 
whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. Uh, human justice, human justice. There's no justice on this earth. Human justice is vanity. No justice on this earth. Do you realize that our justice on this earth, uh, we don't have enough sense to really realize there have been many men placed in prison, spent years in prison, innocent men. Do you realize that today we have murderers walking around who hold government office? Murderers walking around who hold government office and uh, they are responsible for the, for the death of a person and yet they can still hold the office of senator? Do you realize, do you realize that, oh, they must have some glorious, glorious uh, methods of voting up in Massachusetts. This other bird that's up there now, I'm not, I wasn't referring to him before, but this bird I'm referring to now, this, this senator up there who is a, an avowed homosexual who ran a homosexual call uh, thing out of his office in Washington, D.C., he's accused of that. And can you imagine people putting him in office? What's wrong with folks in Massachusetts? Same thing's wrong with them in Tennessee and in Alabama and in Georgia and in Florida. There's a vanity of justice in this world. Where is the justice in it? Brother Roger here this morning. Where's the justice? Where's the justice in throwing the Philippines to the communist dogs? Hmm? That's what America's doing today. America's throwing the Philippines just like a bone, just like a bone to the communist dogs to eat up. You don't believe it? You ask him. You talk with him. God help us realize on the face of this earth under the sun, there is vanity. The only hope's in God. You need to get saved. So whenever this short life is over, when Jesus comes back, you're going to be with him. Amen. Let's stand together.